Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. This is our third video on Project 5.0. This is our 2014 Electroglide Police. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from this lack of radio to one of these Soundstream Reserve HDHU 14 Plus GTS style radios. We're gonna add Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. At the same time, we're gonna change out our thumb controls to the same type that would have been on an Electroglide or Street Glide and get those fully functional also. So hang out and I'll show you how to do this step by step. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing and what products we're using before we jump straight into the bike. So this is our factory radio. Uh, it's not really a radio, it's just a storage pocket. It bolts in right where the original radio would. So this is really nice though because it uses the same mounting locations as a stock radio and they've made this really simple. There's no major modifications, no special parts we need to mount a radio. All we need is a factory style radio. So I've got one here in front of me. This is a GTS factory radio. This would be a really good option if you had the budget. This radio is about $2,200. Uh, it's got some very uh, big limitations. You gotta flash it if you're gonna add an external amplifier. Apple CarPlay doesn't work without a WIM or a jumper installed. Uh, there's a lot of things that aren't here that would be necessary. Uh, from the factory on our police bike, there is no radio wiring. So no way for the data from the bike to communicate with this radio. So we're gonna add that and I'll show that to you here in a second. This last year in January was released the Soundstream Reserve HDHU14. As you see, it looks like a GTS radio. It's built to the exact size, shape, mounts the same way, uses all the factory harnessing, but it gives us some additional features. It gives us RCA outputs. It gives us Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built in. No need to flash this radio if we're gonna do an amp upgrade. Also gives us a 13 band EQ with adjustable high pass and low pass filters. All that means it's gonna sound great. It's IPX water rated, so we don't have to worry about rain, we don't have to worry about washing the bike, and we have a great radio at a much lower cost. So this radio currently is about $2,200 at the Harley dealer. This one shipped to you with a thumb control module is about $868.99 with everything you need to put this in a bike. Now let's talk about our police bike though because there are some things that are missing that we need additionally. First off, we need this. This is our radio harness that runs power and ground of the battery, that gives us our front speaker outputs, that gives us our rear speaker outputs, and it also has a very, very important connection here. These particular data plugs are gonna plug into a factory connection in the fairing, and it's gonna let our ECM talk to the radio. So what that's gonna do for us is allow our thumb controls to send the data to operate our radio, as well as the ECM is gonna turn the radio on and off just like factory. So this harness is available at volunteeraudio.com and it comes in our police packages. So if you go onto our website, you go to our motorcycle section, you look up radios, you'll see, we ask you what year your bike is and then what style. And it says Electroglide or Electroglide Police. When you select there, you can pick this harness and build a full system with everything you need. Now let's talk about the next part. So factory thumb controls on a police bike do not have any radio controls. So I have in front of me a set of brand new Harley controls we're gonna be putting on this bike. And we've learned a lot about different controls. You would think they all look the same, they should work the same. Uh, it really comes down to features. Our particular bike has cruise control. It does not have ABS or traction control. So we have to take a set of hand controls that are designed, and you'll see I've got one here. Actually, I'm sorry, I had the right one. We have our cruise control option here, and you'll notice there's no traction control button. So we have to get one for the right year range. Our bike's a 14, 14 to 20 is the same controls. Then we have to pick our features that our bike has. They have to mate up or your controls won't work. 21 and newer went to the cable clutch. They have a different switch for the clutch when you pull it in. So you gotta make sure you get a 21 or newer set. Again, matching those features to your bike. So at volunteeraudio.com, at the Electric Glide Police Package, we have the ability to select these controls so that you can make sure and get the correct controls for your bike to make sure all of this works. Our new radio, whether you go with a factory radio or the Soundstream Reserve radio, is gonna require a factory style USB. This is not gonna be in the bike. It doesn't come in the police version. We buy them from Harley. They're available on our website. There's a road glide version, a street glide version, different links. Street glide has been hard to get. So if the street glide one's unavailable, buy the road glide one. It's longer and it will fit the street glide fairing as well. 
So we're going to be installing our Soundstream radio here shortly. We're going to retain thumb controls. I'm going to show you how to install these controls. Our front speakers will also need to be added. So factory, there are pods in place to, to hold the speakers. There's no speaker wiring, so at Volunteer Audio, we have the front pod harnesses. We're gonna be adding those along with a set of speakers to plug into this and make it work. It's gonna be very easy. It's all gonna be like factory. It's all gonna be watertight, so we don't have any future problems from corrosion. This is the first part of our build. We'll get all of this installed later. I'll show you how to add an amp, how to add rear speakers, and we're gonna take this thing to the next level. We're also gonna be installing in this video a set of Hertz SX165neo uh, motorcycle speakers. They're one of our favorite speakers, so we're gonna be putting in this bike as well. So let's get the bike apart and start putting all of this in. All right, so first step, we're gonna remove our outer fairing to get to our radio. We're gonna use a T25 Torx driver and we're gonna remove two screws on each side of the inner fairing. There's gonna be two longer ones up here at the top. Get those out. And two short ones at the bottom. It's very important if you put the long ones in the bottom and then you tighten them up, they're gonna create a dimple on the outside of your fairing and you're not gonna be real happy about it. So make sure you keep in mind that they're two different lengths and put them back in the correct place. Go ahead and take these all the way out. We've still got some screws on the other side that's holding our fairing so we don't have to worry about it falling off. All right, so we got those out. Let's move to the other side. All right, so in preparation of pulling the fender, we're gonna take these, these two side passing lights. We're gonna just turn those to the side. It's gonna give us the ability to, to take our fairing off without removing them completely. We're gonna completely remove our two outside windshield bolts. Again, we're still using that same T25 Torx driver. These are gonna be two short screws. And we're gonna take those all the way out, leaving the middle screw holding our fairing in place. So now I'm just gonna loosen this bolt. I'm not gonna take it all the way out. It actually fits, it's a long bolt and it will keep everything from falling off. We're gonna take it loose enough that we can remove our windshield. Once we have the windshield off and we've got our hands back available, we're gonna make sure this bolt's completely loose. So we're gonna grab our fairing and we're gonna pull it out and unplug our headlight. All right, so all in all, it looks pretty good in here. It looks like there might've been some police equipment previously installed. It looks like somebody might've had a radio installed at some point with some speakers. So we'll find that out here shortly. But the next step is we're gonna remove this upper vent. There's just two more screws, one on each side. Still using that same T25 driver. These are a T27, but the 25 takes them out no problem. You never know when you're coming on an older bike, when you're coming behind what you're gonna find inside the fairing. And as you see, we've got our fender protector on, so if we do drop a screw or we drop something, we don't, don't have to worry about denting or scratching that paint. All right, so we grab a panel removal tool. We're gonna to start unplugging all the wiring up here at the top. Very simple process. We're just gonna unplug each one of the, of the wires from the pods and just unsnap where it goes on there. Interesting enough, we have factory wiring here for like a police radio going into this one pod. We're just unplugging all the wiring from each one of the gauges. Some little tabs that you're just gonna have to lift up. Grab a small screwdriver to help with that. Little plastic tabs that just kind of pry out a little bit and then it's gonna release your wiring. And some little push clips holding the harnessing to the back of the gauges. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug our cigarette lighter so I can get the wiring out of that pod. We're gonna be pulling these pods off to add our harnessing. All 
All right, so now we've got all that wiring disconnected. We'll move on to removing, we're gonna remove this metal plate. So this plate is gonna have to come off to make access to get the pocket out so that we can install a radio. Let's remove all the screws out of the top of it and I'll save these screws, we're gonna be reusing them. Our new radio actually has provisions for each one of these screws to go back in. And this is all basically the frame or the structure that keeps this fairing from vibrating and moving around a lot. So it's important that you save all these and put them all back in. So we've got the four screws that went from the plate down to the pocket. We're also gonna remove two screws on each side of the speedometer. We'll be removing the entire speedometer. For now, we're just removing the two bottom screws. All right, so the outer screws that go into this pod are actually an Allen head. But normally, your torques will fit them, and as long as somebody's not messed them up previously and cross-threaded them, you can take them out with hand tools pretty easily. Remove those four. Nice, so all four of those were in good shape, came right out. So after those are done, we're just gonna pull this plate out. Actually, one more step. We got one little screw that goes from our storage pocket to here. I wanna take a second, I'll show you this. So the back of the storage pocket, you'll see there's a grommet. That is the hole where our USB is gonna go into the storage pocket. So we can connect our phone up for our Apple CarPlay or Android Auto later. Let's get our plate out of the way. And now we have our pocket here and we're gonna be removing that and putting a radio in, but our speedometer is still in the way. So we're gonna take the top screw out of it now, making sure that we keep up with the trim that's on top of it. It's gonna come off with it. And we're gonna put all that back together here at the end. All right, so now we're gonna take a 316 Allen head. We're gonna remove the four bolts that hold this pocket in place. Now keep these bolts as well. They're gonna hold our new radio in. All right, our four Allen heads have been removed that hold the pocket. Now the pocket's just gonna lift up and come out. All right, so if you were just doing a radio, so let's say you've got an electric glide standard and you already had speakers in it, uh, or maybe you have a, just a street glide or electric glide and you're just doing the radio, at this point we would start going back together with our radio. But on our police bike, we don't have speakers in the front, uh, so we're gonna continue on and mo remove these pods while we have most of it already off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the Allen heads around the perimeter of these pods. And you'll notice some years these pods are clear, some years they're black. Uh, it changes, I think somewhere around 17 or 18. We do a lot of bikes. Every now and then you get a bike that has one black pod and one clear pod because Harley apparently had plenty of them for one side and not enough for the other still in inventory. Here is a tip. Uh, most of you I know probably do not have an 11 millimeter on a wobble. And I'm not talking about an 11 millimeter socket and a wobble put together. I'm talking about one that is one piece and that's what's required to get the three bolts on each side of the frame on these pods out. But there's an easier way. While you've got your radio out, there are two plastic push clips that we can take a Phillips screwdriver and we can get these clips undone. 
They're just plastic. We're going to push those out. Two little retainers, one on each side. Let me pry this one wiring clip out. Get our second retainer undone here. Now these police boxes are nice because they don't have a lot of wiring in the fairing. We'll make sure we add most of it back, but we don't have to worry about wiring for whim. There's no boom amp wiring. There's nothing like that in the, in the way. So once we get those retainers out, this plastic pl uh, plate is going to just slide out of our way. And it's going to give you a really good visual access to these three bolts on each side. Now you can get in there with another tool a lot closer, a lot easier. And again, they are going to be an 11 millimeter or a 7 16 And I'm going to grab a socket. I'm going to start removing these three and taking this pot off. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Here is a wobble with an 11 made into it. They're not snapped together. Makes it short enough that this would work from the other angle. I'm going to use the same tool though and just have easier access with this little tray out of the way. I got that bolt out. Let's go ahead and take our pot off. All right, we're gonna continue this process on the other side. Let me go ahead and get its, its bolts out as well. tray a little bit further over. Always tend to drop at least one bolt. Just get a magnet, pull it out here where the forks are. I needed just a slightly longer extension to get this bolt on the other side. continue to remove the perimeter bolts on this pod then we'll move to our counter and we'll go ahead and put some speakers in it looks like somebody's put some some pretty inexpensive or cheaper speakers in here sometimes you'll find that on the police bikes an officer just trying to get something that he can hear uh, we found that cheap speakers never make it where you can hear it though so normally a waste of time and a waste of money all right so we got this pod off let's go get us some speakers installed and we're going to look at putting some new grills in here as well all right, so we've got our pods out. Looks like it has a, a cheaper set of speakers in it. They don't appear to be waterproof at all. Um, I guess we're going to find out what they are when we pull them out. Oh, hog tunes. All right, so we see there's nothing to keep water out of the middle of the speaker, as well as it's got a strontium uh, magnet. So it's not a very good quality speaker, but somebody did pay probably decent money to get some branded hog tunes. We're going to be upgrading these to the Hertz Neodymium magnet speakers. They won't let water get through. It's going to be a lot better sounding as well as um, more efficient. So water, water resistant, more efficiency and better sound. So these are going to go where they belong in the trash and we're going to upgrade to some new speakers. Let me get the other ones out. They were also installed with sheetrock screws. Sheetrock screws should only be used for sheetrock. So don't put your speakers in your Harley with them. Let's throw these away. All right, so when you buy a package for your police bike from Volunteer Audio, we've thought of everything and we make sure you get everything you need. And part of that is gonna be these harnesses. So we're gonna send you out a set of front speaker pod harnesses. They're gonna have the factory connection on them. So watertight connectors, so we don't have to worry about corrosion. It's gonna have a grommet pre-installed on the end of it that's gonna fit perfectly into your speaker pod. 
On top of that, if you were to use factory speakers, which I do not recommend using factory speakers, but sometimes people are cheap and they're free, uh, it has the correct ends on them. So uh, the larger terminal, which is black, is gonna be your negative speaker connection. The smaller one, which is white, is gonna be the positive one. So we're gonna use those to connect up our Hertz speakers here. They're probably gonna fit relatively tight, but if they don't, we're gonna squeeze them a little tighter to make sure they don't come off. Yeah, normally when you got new harnesses, you don't have to go through that process, but just making sure. All right, so we've got our speaker plugged in. They're good and tight. We don't have to worry about them coming off. Now we're gonna drop our speaker in and you're gonna notice if they haven't already cut it off for some reason, it's a little nub that sticks up and it fits perfectly on your Hertz speaker. So it's all gonna line up properly. It's gonna use all those factory mounting holes. And if you have factory hardware, it's gonna be using that factory mounting hardware. In this case, we had some sheetrock screws, so we're gonna put some better screws in place. There you have it, much better speaker, ready to go back into the bike, grommeted with factory plugs. So I'm gonna do this again, we'll move back to the bike, we'll get it installed. All right, so we've got our speakers back mounted in our pods, but before we install those pods, I'm gonna change the speaker grills. Now, if you order our Infinity Kappa Perfect speakers or our Precision Power motorcycle speakers, they're gonna come with these grills new in the box, already logoed up for your new speakers. Um, Hertz does not do that. Uh, they don't actually make them yet. Volunteer Audio makes Hertz logos uh, on grills, so we're going to change to those. But I want you to know they're sold separate. So if you buy our package with just the speakers, it's not going to come with the grills, and you need to make sure that you purchase those. Um, we do have an option there to select them, but make sure you do the ones for Street Glide if you're going to be replacing these front grills. It's not going to be the round tour pack grills. So take out the old, just plain black grills. We're gonna put in our new ones. They're a little fancier. They've got a little bit of a, a bevel to them that's not on the stock ones. A little bit, makes it a little more interesting. Plus it has that Hertz uh, logo to let, let everybody know that you've put much better speakers in your Harley. Again, the other two brands that we offer come with them in it, so you don't have to pay for those separate, but the Hertz ones do not come with them yet. I think in the future, they're working on adding those but currently still not with them. All right, and always, <laughs> you see these aren't the easiest pods to get off if you're at this point with me. You don't wanna forget to change the grills and have to take the pods back off. And uh, I've been there. I uh, get to the end and go, oh man, I forgot to put that grill in place. So let's do it before we go back together. All right, got our new grills in place. Now let's get our speaker pods back in. All right, so speaker pods are gonna go back in just like they came out. As you can see, this is a very, very flimsy fairing without all of these additional parts bolted in. So it's very, very important as you do this that you put all the bolts back in place and it'll be very rigid when you're done and it won't vibrate and bounce and shake. And sometimes you see that people leave these bolts out. I'm thankful whoever did previous work on this one had put them all back in and they're there for a reason. All right, so now I'm gonna hand start and tighten each one of these pod bolts. I go from the bottom frame here. Definitely want to start on my hand and work them a little ways just to make sure that you don't get them cross-threaded before you hit them with a power tool. Let's get our next, our other side in place. 
It's amazing how this just kind of hangs out here without that screw in there. All right, so we'll put our other pod where it goes. Same thing again. We ever did the previous install had actually apparently lost a couple of the bolts and this one is actually too long so it doesn't go tight I'm gonna get the right bolt the right length and take care of that there we go found a bolt the right length and the right right thread pitch now all of that is on and good. Let's get our other three bolts in up the side of that frame. If you ever feel like one of the bolts is the wrong length, don't just tighten it up because the other side of all of these is your outside part of your fairing and we don't wanna have a dimple that pokes out and leaves a mark or takes the paint off. Hopefully later as part of our build, we're gonna change out a lot of the parts, if not all of them with the Advan Black. I'm going to do a color change and part of that will probably be a gloss interfering. So continue to watch the series as we get to that part, we'll change it out. We'll go step by step on that. Probably end up having to pull all these pods again, but you know, we want to show you the audio part first and then we'll show you that later. So with those back in, you notice your fairing is a lot more rigid, a lot less flexible. I'm going to put this final plate back in and it'll make it really strong again. But our pods are back in place. We've got our wiring out here so we can plug up our new speakers. Just make sure we make sure our grommets stay in place. Pulled that out in the middle of all this. All right, so I'm going to get this little plastic tray back where it goes now. clips and hold it in. Two little ears on the back side to get those lined up and then push your little plastic retainers back in place. All right, good deal. So we're ready to set our radio, our new radio back where it goes. All right, so our little storage pocket, it was missing a screw. Apparently somebody took it out, and left it out previously. Uh, so I, during the break there, I just added another screw in. Didn't want you to think we left it all loose and falling out like that. So here's our new Soundstream Reserve HDHU14 radio. It's ready to be bolted in. It's the exact size, distance, mounting, and everything is a stock radio. So I got a lot of guys that they'll put a radio in and then they'll go, oh, I've got a gap around the fairing now that I didn't have. And what happened was they never looked at it with their old radio. These plastic fairings warp up a little bit and you will have some, some cracks, crevices, and a little bit of a gap. And that's why Harley puts this big piece of foam tape top and bottom, because that was their solution to it possibly moving or, or not being where it should be. So. We're gonna bolt it in, expect there to be not perfect fitment, but oh, it's so much better than the older Harleys. Let's grab our bolts up here. So I'm gonna use some of our factory bolts. You'll see the factory bolts had a plastic uh, bushing on them. The radio comes with these new as well. So if you don't have those uh, on your bolts, you can get them out of the radio package. Ours were still on some of our bolts, uh, but that is needed. It's an isolator. It keeps the uh, stainless bolt from corroding on the aluminum chassis of the radio and at the same time it centers the radio where it's supposed to be. There is no adjustment. You just put the bolts in and tighten it down. So 
So one of our factory bolts, it didn't have that little rubber oscillator, but I did get one out of our bag that came with the radio, so it does now. One other step I did while we were off camera, where the grommets go into the pods while I had the radio out, I went ahead and put a little bit of hot glue on them just to make sure they didn't back out, vibrate out, or fall out later. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of some sort of adhesive there to hold that in place. Silicone would work fine, but we use a lot of automotive hot glue. It'll hold it in as well. All right, so we've got our four bolts in. We'll go ahead and put our top plate Actually, we're going to put our speedometer and then our top plate back in. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our top bolt back in the speedometer for now. The other two are going to go through the plate and hold all of it in together. All right, this is the plate that holds all of this together very well, but it's also where later on in a future video as we upgrade and add an amplifier, the amplifier will set right on top of this plate as well. Start by putting our two speedometer slash tack bolts in. I'm gonna leave all of these a little loose until we get them all started. And the next ones I think you need to put in are the ones into the top of the radio because you're going to flex this fairing a little bit to line those up. So I used one of these bolts to hold our pocket in, so I'm gonna get another one. We're out currently. So I'm gonna pick one up at our hardware store and add it later into the top of this plate. Not gonna do it at the moment because we don't have but a limited amount of time to shoot this video and show you what's going on, but you get the idea. They all need to be put back in and we're gonna later do that off camera. All right, so we definitely wanna tighten these down because there's not really any adjustment to those. And next we're gonna try to get all of our pod bolts in. It's going to be just a little bit tricky because, again, our fairing is, is slightly uh, warped because that's what happens over time. And we've got to get all those lined up. These are a little off. Normally, we'll take a small screwdriver and go in one of the holes and kind of pry the pod where it goes. We'll start the other bolt. That way, we don't end up fighting it too much. All right, so we got those back started. I'm going to go and put the rear pocket screw in. Then I'll tighten these perimeter bolts all the way up. Sometimes it's a struggle getting them lined up. Sometimes you need help, which we just had two people push on this pod while lining the screws up, but definitely put them back in. It's very important that they're there. The experience, this whole experience is gonna be better. Everything about your handlebars to your fairing is gonna be more stable with all the bolts back in like they need to be. So now I'm going to take this grommet out and we're gonna route our new USB in for our radio. All right, here's our new replacement uh, USB. This is actually one off a of road glide. It's got a little more length to it because it's meant for a road glide, but the street glide ones are on back order right now and can't be got. So this is what we're using. We're gonna take this factory grommet and we're just gonna push it forward and into this pod so we can remove it. like that. Then we're gonna feed this through this hole to the back, to plug it into our radio. Let me get it. All right, so let's fish this all the way out. This is a good time to adjust your grommet to wherever you want it. So you have the length of USB in the pocket that you want. I'm gonna slide this down a little further from where Harley put it. Just 
There we go, we're sealed up and in there. You're gonna notice this has a very specific connector. It's gonna plug in on the back of our radio and that's gonna give us access to hook our Apple CarPlay or Android Auto up. I'm just gonna take the excess, put it up in here, put a little zip tie around it. Let's move on to our radio wiring. All right, so this is the harness that we're gonna send you when you have a police bike. All right, so you're gonna see you have that factory radio plug. So whether you're doing a factory Harley radio or you're doing the uh, precision power radio, that's the correct plug and it'll plug right in. Now we're doing the precision power radio, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the T harness that comes with it. We're gonna plug it in. So it's important that we use the harness that comes with the radio because this allows us to plug up our thumb control module because we are gonna be changing our handlebar controls and we want to be able to control our radio from those switches. So you'll see here that this is our, the one that comes with the radio, it's gonna plug right in to the radio. It's also gonna connect to the harness that we have here, like so. All right, from here, we're gonna have a four pin connector. This is called a backbone connector or a rear speaker connector. So if you buy the backbone harness, it runs down the middle of the bike, it'll plug in here to give you rear speaker output. We're also gonna have two front speaker pod connectors and they're gonna be marked. Well, actually I said they're gonna be marked. They're EIA color coded. So they're gonna be white and they're going to be gray. So white is gonna be the left side of your bike. Gray is gonna be the right side of the bike. And these are gonna plug right into those harnesses that we installed earlier today. So I'm gonna get them all plugged up and then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna zip tie this in very nice. Now you'll see these two data connectors. This is important because this is how the bike is actually gonna communicate as far as the ECM with this module to keep our thumb controls working or to turn our radio on and off. So if you'll look right under the radio, there's a plate and on either side, there's a little connector that you're gonna unplug. On the 14 to 20, it does not matter which one you unplug, but you're gonna unplug one of them. You're gonna plug it into this connector. And you're gonna take the other side, there's a mate inversion, and you're gonna plug it back in. So this is just T-harnessing in between, and that's connecting us to the CAN bus wiring in the motorcycle. Now I did say 14 to 20, it doesn't matter. 21 and newer, it does matter. Uh, you're only gonna plug it up, I believe, on the left side of the bike. Uh, but if you have questions about that, you can definitely reach out to us and we can go over exactly which one because I don't have those directions in front of me at the moment. So the only thing we have left beyond that, that was super simple. The only thing we have left to connect is this power and ground that runs back to the battery. So the next step we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and pull the gas tank. We're gonna run this back to the battery. And then once I get this routed and everything at the right length, we're gonna put it back all uh, back together and zip tie all this up. Um, but while we're here, let's go ahead and put our gauge wiring back where it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap all of it back in place. Very simple process, just putting it back where it was earlier. All right, cigarette lighters plugged back in, gauges are all reconnected in, and now we're down to just looking at that radio wiring that we have. So let's move to the other side, we'll get the gas tank off and we'll get this routed back to the battery. All right, so first step we're gonna do, we're gonna take our seat off. This particular seat looks to be held on just with one Phillips screw. So we'll take it off. All right, so this is something I was expecting to see. I've seen some lighting underneath this. It all looks terrible. So all this is coming out, it's going in the trash. We're gonna put it back like it was never here. Um, and then if we do lighting, we'll do a better job, make it look a lot better later. But currently that's not really on my list other than some custom dynamics lighting. Magically, fast forward just a few minutes, we've cut all that wiring out of here. All those lights are gone and out of our way. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing the gas tank. We're also gonna be removing the battery tray cover. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter uh, socket. We've got it on a Milwaukee battery ratchet. I'm going to go ahead and remove these bolts. There's going to be two at the front of the gas tank, one on each side, two at the rear of the gas tank, and two holding the battery tray down. So we're going to go ahead, and, or the battery cover down. Let's go ahead and take those out.
All right, so on each side at the front, there's gonna be this little plastic cover. Just pull that right off and you'll see the bolt it goes to the gas tank underneath it. All right, so on your gas tank, you're gonna see the fuel line goes to the bottom of it. It's a little chrome sleeve that if you just push up, will release the bottom fuel line. Not much gas is gonna come out, but I always grab just a little paper towel to catch the few drips. It's gonna disconnect and at the same time shut off the fuel. So it's a very nice little design, very easy to take your gas tank loose. All right, so next we're just gonna pull our, our fuel tank vent up from the frame. We're also gonna unplug our fuel sending unit. That's gonna be the gray plug under the seat. And then there's another fuel vent on the other side. We're just gonna disconnect it as well. And now that we have that done, we should be able to take the gas tank off and just set it to the side. All right, so now that our gas tank's off and out of the way, we're gonna reposition a few of the brake lines. And we're gonna be taking this backbone cover off. That's just a plastic cover. It's got some little push clips to hold it down. It's gonna give us access to the wiring right down the middle of the bike. This is the, the only place that you should run wiring from the fairing back to the battery. So you're gonna run through here. Uh, right now we're just running our radio wiring, but in the future we'll run a rear speaker wiring, we'll run an amp, power and ground harness, all that will fit in here and go to the back. So all I'm doing is pulling the power wire just right where the factory wiring would have went. We're gonna route it down here inside of this cover. Make sure we have plenty to go to the battery. Once we see that we have enough for that, we can put our cover back on and we can put our gas tank back on. Just make sure while you're going back together that you didn't let any of the factory wiring kind of come out the sides. We don't wanna pinch anything, or cause any future problems that weren't there. Put our brake lines back in their holders. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and set our gas tank back on. I'm going to go ahead and hand start each one of your bolts. Now I'm gonna tighten them up with our, with our ratchet. The front one's all the way first. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect our vent. I'm gonna leave this unplugged for now because we're fixing to pull our battery tray. But I am gonna go ahead and route the other vent right on down the frame where it originally was. And here shortly, we'll put a zip tie in place just to keep it off of the exhaust. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove, or actually just unsnap the ECM. That's your box computer. I wanna make a point here. So later on, we're gonna put a different seat on this bike and we're gonna use a Robert Becker designed seat lock. Um, not only do we see people getting their seats stolen and this lock is needed to keep that, but a lot of times when they steal your seat, they also just simply reach underneath your seat, they unclip your ECM, unplug it, and they steal that too. So it's valuable, worth quite a bit of money. Plus when you come out to your bike, you're not gonna be able to start your bike and come after them if you were to catch them in the process. So as you see, we just unsnapped a couple connectors, took the ECM off, and we just lifted the battery tray right off the top. Normally there's a loop here that goes onto a metal bracket in the front, but somebody in the past has cut that off to make this a lot easier just to take it in and out. 
All right, so now we're gonna connect up our wiring to our battery. All these are either 10 millimeter or large Phillips headed bolts. They're not normally too tight, so a Phillips headed uh, number two screwdriver works well on them. I'm gonna remove some previous wiring here that didn't need to be there. The harnessing is gonna come with a fuse already pre-installed when you order it from us. All you have to do is connect it up. Then take your ground, which is the black wire, put it on the negative post of the battery. All right, so it's really that simple. We now have wiring ran front to back, connected to the battery to make our radio work. We're just gonna put this down here in front of the battery. We're gonna set our tray back on, but I wanna to talk to you about something else. So this is a police bike. We've ran into this many, many times that there's actually a plug underneath the back seat. This is that plug that, that hooks the horn connections that are actually in it now uh, to a siren. And it allows them to hit what would be the horn button and it actually would honk the siren. So once you change your thumb controls, which we're gonna be doing in our next video, you're gonna have to actually repin this connector. If you don't repin it correctly, when you change your thumb controls, your horn is gonna be stuck on all the time. Uh, it's gonna be very annoying and you're not gonna know what to do. So I wanted to point out this black connector and let you know that if you look, your wiring colors do not match up. And all you have to do is really undo this connector, unpin it and move them to where they made up across the plug from each other. They call that putting a police bike in civilian mode. There's some documents at Harley that you don't have access to that tell you how to do it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in our next video. So we're gonna go ahead and connect our gas tank back up here. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt our battery tray back down and get our ECM back in place. Plug this, wrap it around. All right, so we're back together here. If we're not doing thumb controls, you could actually just leave this harness alone. So we're gonna move to the front. We're gonna tidy up our wiring there. We're gonna finish in the fairing. Um, and then we'll close out this video and we'll do another video showing you how to install the thumb controls for non-police and how to rewire this plug. So let's move to the front and we'll get the wiring cleaned up. All right, so I wanna go over what I've done here. So I took the wiring that we had, we just kind of took any of the excess, zip tied it up out of the way. So we definitely don't wanna leave all this wiring just hanging here. Always when I install a Soundstream radio or any radio that uses a thumb control module, we mount that up high. We do that because inside of this is not waterproof. Water's most likely not gonna to get to it here, but if we left it hanging, we're gonna have water spread between. We're also gonna have it run down anything that gets wet and go into it. By leaving it high, there's drip loops, all the water's running away from it. A couple things I don't install. This is my personal bikes. There's some things that I just am not gonna use. Uh, I did not hook up an FM antenna. We're not gonna do FM. Uh, if I do later decide to, I'll run a new antenna all the way to the back and put a mast. I think a hidden antenna is a waste of time. Uh, LED lighting is gonna block FM reception. Class D amps block FM reception. I'm gonna use Apple CarPlay. I'm gonna use Bluetooth. I'm gonna use Sirius XM through those apps. So I, I'm not going to need an FM antenna for what I'm doing with the bike. If it's really important to you that FM works well, you need to run an FM antenna all the way to the back and put you a mast antenna back there. It's further away from the things that interfere and you're gonna get much better reception. I'm also not going to install the microphone. So the radio comes with a mic. You can put it up here and at low speeds, you could talk to somebody, use your voice assistant and such. But at higher speeds, it's really not gonna work well. And I really am just not gonna answer the phone while we're on the bike anyway. So I'm not gonna put a microphone up there. I'm not gonna hook up the FM antenna. Uh, USB was important, making sure all of this was wired and in place was important. Uh, later video, we'll be putting the amplifier up here. We'll be hooking it up to our amp turn on wire. So just watch all of that. We've still got our rear speaker output connector here to run back. 
because when we do our plug and play amps, it's gonna tee in here and it's gonna power up all of this wiring. So we're not gonna have to run new wiring uh, outside of the fact that there is no rear wiring on this factory. So all the wiring is up high. I know we can take our fairing now, our headlock fits in here. It's gonna clear all of this. We can plug it in, put our fairing back on and we would be done in the front. Um, I think that's gonna be the next step. So let's get that part done and then we'll move on to getting our thumb controls in place. All right, so now we're gonna put our vent back in that we took out at the beginning. All right, now all we gotta do is put the main fairing back on. All right, so one bolt there always helps hold it in place while we get all the other bolts started. Looks like somebody's done some modification to this windshield to get it to lean at a different angle. All right, so let's go to the other side and get those bolts in before we tighten these all the way down. All right, again, the longer bolts are gonna to go to the top of the fairing. We wanna make sure, make sure, make sure you put these in the right place because I don't wanna see you do any damage to your outer fairing by putting them in the wrong spot. Shorter bolts go to the bottom. All right, so now that those are tied, I'm gonna go back over these top bolts. Go and get those the rest of the way in. I'm sure we'll be changing this windshield. Not a huge fan of it either. So maybe one more thing on the list of Project 5.0. But at this point, straighten out our front lights where we, where we turned them to get the fairing off. And we are ready to listen to the radio, but we're gonna stop here. All right, so at this point, if we weren't doing thumb controls, we would just power it up, radio would come on, we'd be ready to go without our thumb controls in place. Uh, we're gonna continue on in our next video, so I'm not gonna fire it up yet. Watch the next one, you'll learn all about the radio, you'll learn how the thumb controls work and all the things we had to do to maintain them. But I wanna thank you for watching the video. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope it's answered questions, it's shown you what you needed. And at volunteeraudio.com, we have this package available for you. As simple as going to our motorcycle section of the website, go to radios, go to 14 and newer, and then pick Electroglide Police, and you'll see a package there where you can pick your speakers, check that you've got a police bike so you get all the correct harnessing, the USB that's gonna be needed, as well as pick the radio and everything else that you're gonna need all the way down to the thumb controls. So definitely go to volunteeraudio.com, check that out. There'll be a link to those packages in the description of this video as well on YouTube. If you have questions about it, you can send a comment in the video. I'm very quick to reply back to your comments as long as they're on subject. Uh, definitely uh, leave a comment there. You can call us at one 844 audio You can also reach out to us at sales at volaudio.com. That's V-O-L as in vols. So sales at volaudio.com and you can call us at 1-844-30-AUDIO. So lots of ways to contact us. We've got a great staff. Samantha and Zach are super knowledgeable as well as uh, IJ. You can speak to me as well, depending on the hours. I'm always busy doing some builds. 
But definitely reach out to us with questions, reach out to us if you wanna order, and I hope this has helped you know everything you need to know so you can do this yourself on your police bike. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can see the rest of the build, as well as share this video with your friends. And if you're, if you're part of the different Harley groups and you see somebody ask about a police bike, share this video, help us out, let them see that what they need to know, as well as help build volunteer audio for us. Uh, we do a lot of work putting a lot of time into these videos to help you know what you need to do. Please share it with others. But thank you so much for watching and God bless.